Hi everyone, this is Dave from the Wonderware Online team, and I'm here today to give you an introduction to Insight powered by Wonderware Online. I like to do all my demonstrations from the public site. That way you can come back later on, go to online.wonderware.com, and you can see everything I've shown you on screen, see it for yourself, simply by clicking on the big green friendly Try It Now button in the middle of the screen. I'll be logged into Insight powered by Wonderware Online, into our public demonstration system. The idea of this one is that we include as much of the functionality as we can using simulated data so anyone can come in and see the sorts of things they can do with Insight powered by Wonderware Online. The first thing you see is what we call our home screen. The home screen is the starting point for every user. Whether you're a user or an administrator, this is where everything starts off. Important parts of the home screen. First is this box in the, the top center here, the search box. We've made search a core concept to Insight and based all of our navigation experience around search. The idea, simply, everyone knows how to use Google or Bing to do a search. So let's use that for industrial data as well. The next most important area is down in this section here, what we call suggested content. This is content that's available to me in Insight it may be content that I set up myself or content I've visited recently or content that uh, the Insight platform has decided might be relevant to you. The third area is what we call the news feed over on the right hand side here. This is where our machine learning algorithms that run on your data as it comes in, any uh, anomalies or interesting uh, behaviors it notices or detects, this is where we report them out. So from this simple home screen, Again, it's the starting point for your use or your exploring of your data and insight. Now, finally, obviously, because I'm in a demonstration system, we wanted to make it easy for you, give you the opportunity to sign up and, and do this yourself. So I can do that very simply by clicking on the sign up button here. That will give me my own system, uh, a free 45 day trial. Basically, I can use it for real. There are no restrictions as far as functionality, just that 45 day time limit. To make things easier for the video though, I'm gonna click on this Xbox to get rid of that, that banner um, and just give us more screen real estate. So from the home screen, what can I do? Well, first of all, I can go and look at content that might've already been created. Very simple, just click on one of these tiles and it will take me to that piece of content. This demo system uses a water and uh, wastewater treatment plant. So the tiles on my home screen are all relevant to someone working in that industry. They're gonna be data that's familiar or scenarios that are familiar to someone. Your data for your plant, you're gonna see content that's more familiar and more relevant to you. Now, if these tiles aren't interesting or if I wanna go somewhere different, that's what search is for. So water and wastewater treatment, we all know water uses pumps. So if I type in the word pump, our search engine starts to pull back data, pull back content that matches that that search term that you've used. So I can see here at the top, some saved content that's been created uh, using the word pump in its name, some saved content that has somehow been flagged as being about pumps. And I can also see data that is related to a pump um, by the alias, by the name, by the description, etc. I know pumps are used in water, but imagine I didn't know anything at all. I didn't even know what my starting search term should be. That's fine too. I could literally just click in the box and we start to pull back using a wildcard search. So I can see here I've got saved content about valley, saved content about mountain, saved content about clear well. Valley and mountain happen to be two sites in the, uh, in the demonstration system. Clear well happens to be an area in the demonstration system. But I've also started to pull back tags purely based on that wildcard search. Um, I can see here I've got 113 tags being pulled back. Clearwell outlet valve, cartridge filter, etc. So even if I don't know anything about my data structure, Insight makes it easy to find my data. Searching for wildcard is maybe not all that useful. So I'm gonna search for, let's use the word Clearwell. I just, I know this demo, I know that's an interesting area. What I can do here, I've got my list of tags. So 35 that have the name Clearwell in them. I've got some saved content and so on. I'm gonna start building some content from scratch. I'm gonna start exploring my data. So the way I do that, I can literally just click on name includes Clearwell and we'll set up an exploration screen of those 35 tags. What we've done here, this is what we call the explore experience. 
I've got my 35 tags. I have them on the left-hand side broken down into groupings based on their engineering unit. Cubic meters per hour, parts per million, uh, pH levels. In the center, I have my visualization. This one here is what we call a status board. It gives me a very quick overview of some of those tags, their values, their behaviors. Over on the right-hand side, I have these two little uh, toggles here, which let me change the visualization I'm using or change the tags that I'm looking at. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, I have what we call the time picker. The idea of the time picker changes the time frame of the data I'm looking at. So we can see straight away, I'm looking at all of my tags with these first what, one, two, three, four, five selected. I'm looking at today and I'm looking at them in a status board. Pretty simple to start exploring from here. I could go and expand the time frame. Let's look at yesterday. Data changes. Let's look at the last three days. Changes again. Let's go and change the visualization. Uh, line chart. Now, the line chart's not all that interesting here, probably because of the scales or the values I've got. So I have some chart options. I can stack the axes. Obviously, straight away, I start to see more interesting things going on with my data. So without even knowing what these tags are, I can see there's some kind of relationship between this one here, which is the Clearwell Inlet temperature, and this purple one, which is the Clearwell Inlet flow. Funnily enough, flow goes down, temperature goes up. So straight away, very quickly, I've been able to start exploring my data and start to identify things going on. I can also turn tags on and off, simply by clicking. And they're removed or added from the chart as necessary. You can see as I hover over them, I get this little pop-up that shows me information about them as well. That is the basics of the Explore screen. Different visualization types I have from here, uh, line chart, column chart, with different aggregation options, average, min, max, etc. I also have a uh, grid and an XY plot. Now, this is for all of my tags. If I get more specific about my engineering unit, I get different chart options available to me. So if I click here, I narrow it down to just these four tags um, about cubic meters per hour. Let's turn on the other two tags. I can see I have a slightly different list of chart options. I have now this new one, summary chart, which shows me how these values scale in relation to each other. I also have uh, the summary grid, rolling sum, cumulative line, and potentially diagnostic grids. If I go to a different grouping, a different engineering unit group, say something discrete, uh, running and stopped, that's gonna be a set of discrete tags. Something is either running or stopped. I will get a different set of visualizations. I have now a time and state chart and a Gantt chart. So if I turn on the second tag and I go to my time in state, I can see the amount of time that each tag has spent in the running or the stopped state. And if I go to the Gantt chart, I get a Gantt style visualization of that. So again, I'm starting to learn more about my data and its behavior. Say I wanna get really sophisticated and combine an analog with this. If I go back to the old tags, kept those same two tags selected. I'm gonna go and pick a couple of analog tags that relate to that. So this is the Clearwell outlet. That's probably related to the outlet flow. So if I turn on the outlet flow and the outlet pressure, and I look at my chart gallery, I've got line chart here with a little Gantt underneath. If I look at that, I can start to see the relationships between when the start, uh, when the outlet is running or stopped and what that does to the values for the pressure and the flow. Narrow that down again to today and I can start to see that when the outlet is stopped, the flow drops and vice versa. All fairly reasonable, sensible stuff. I've explored my way to finding something useful in my data. I wanna save this and come back to it later on. Very simple. 
click on the button down the bottom here. I have the options of save, save it for myself. I can download it as a CSV file or an, to Excel online, or I can share it with someone else on my team. Now, obviously being in a demo system, we don't allow you to save things, but I can still see that I can give the content a name and also a series of keywords to make it easier to find later on. And I then have the option again to share it with my team or just keep it visible to myself. Now, an advantage of saving a piece of content is that it starts to then appear in what we call the content library. So this drop down at the top here with the word content. These are all pieces of content that have been set up as part of the demo or saved by somebody else. They were useful or they were interesting. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, mountain current flows. And I can see that all of the settings that I've just gone through with Explore, the tags that are selected, the time frame, and so on, they're all saved as part of that content. Now, a second advantage to saving pieces of content, uh, they start being available to me on my mobile phone. If I switch to Smart Glance and go into the demo system, I will see all of these same pieces of content in my list on the phone. So I can see here uh, mountain current flows. And if I go into mountain current flows on the phone, simply by tapping on it, I get the same list of tags coming through and I get the same basic view that we have on screen in Insight. I can also go to a line chart just by tapping the few tags that I'm interested in and tapping on chart. Again, in Smart Glance, I've got the same data coming up the same update cycle, the same information that I have to me available to me in Insight. Another advantage of using a mobile phone is the alerting system. Say that I'm interested in a particular tag. It's, it's an important value or something critical that I need to monitor. Uh, let's go and choose one from our list. Let's pick, say, the outlet flow. I could go and set an alert on that tag to tell me when it changes value beyond a certain limit. Just by tapping set alert, I get the options of when I want to be notified, greater than, less than, equal to, etc., and I get to specify the value. And when that rule is met, that's going to push out a notification to my mobile phone, both iOS and Android are supported. And if I tap on the alert on the phone, it will bring me back into that same piece of content so that I can see why the value triggered the alert or what the value was that caused the alert to be sent. So we've covered the basics of search, the basics of explore, and also saving and sharing content. Now remember on the save screen, if I go in, we have this option here for keywords. You can see that this piece of content was saved with three keywords, water, flows, and mountain. Now they're all about making the content easier to find. So if I run a search for the word mountain, I'll see that I've got this link here, saved content about mountain. That's based on that keyword. Now, if I click on this, what Insight will do is automatically build me a dashboard of all of the pieces of content that use that keyword. So this is a step beyond even drag and drop dashboards. We think of this as automatic dashboards. I didn't have to do any of the layout work here. Literally, saving the content, putting the keyword on made this possible. Of course, I can go and tweak the layout if I want. I can go and move things around, put them in different places, I can go and remove tiles if I like. I can go and add extra tiles if I like. But the point is, this is all able to be done without any real effort, literally just by saving a piece of content and putting a keyword on it and doing a search. Think of it as Pinterest for industrial information. So from my automatic dashboard, this can also act like a home screen. I can tap on any one of these tiles or click on them uh, in a, a laptop experience and go in and see that tile that tiles data full screen back in the Explore experience again. Interestingly too, I can go and add comments to my data by clicking on the little comment icon and then positioning where I want the comment. I can go and type in extra information that's again, just like content, visible only to me or shared with my team. So we've taken industrial data, made it easy to find, easy to chart, easy to put in a dashboard, and now we're trying to make it, take it into that social space.
so that you can socialize and comment and, and basically have running conversations about what's going on with your data. So with that basic demonstration of what you can do with Insight powered by Wonderware Online, probably a big question in most people's mind is what about cybersecurity? My simple response, what about it? We have a lot of effort going into cybersecurity. We spend a lot of time to make sure that your data is secure. And we even have a website devoted to this. Uh, that website is very simply trust.wonderware.com. If you go to that site, you will find all of the latest information about our security policies, about our procedures that we take, uh, about all of the legal and basically any bit of information that we can think of or that you can, any question that you could ask about cybersecurity to give you the confidence you need. As it says there on screen, you demand better, we deliver. In finishing up, what I'd like to conclude on is the fact that everything I've shown here is available from the public demo. If I click on the log out button, I go back to the main online.wonderware.com website. Everything you've seen on screen today, you can see for yourself by clicking on this big green friendly try it now button. Or if you've got a little more confidence or a little more interest, feel free to click on sign up. And for the cost of your email address and a password, which you get to choose, of course, we'll give you a free 45 day unrestricted trial of using Wonderware Online. So in conclusion, Wonderware Online lets you turn your data into insights. It is that simple. Thanks for your time.